Hey everybody, my name is Diane Gale and I am the author of the blog SustainableSlowLiving.com and today you and I are going to make a reversible bento bread bag together. Um, I just made my first one of these to do the pictures for this post. It was super easy and tons of fun. They are made from a breathable material so that your bread, your homemade bread, when you store it in there has airflow and um, the moisture is wicked away from it. The preferred material for these bags is linen, but when I was at the fabric store, all they had was a linen cotton blend. And I have no idea how much regular linen is going for nowadays, but the linen cotton cotton blend was $40 a yard and I decided that was just not a reasonable price to pay for a bread bag and besides it was more like an upholstery material that really wouldn't have worked for this project anyway. Um, I'm very excited about these as an eco-friendly option to store your bread and they do keep your bread fresh longer. The design of a bento bag is an origami design, it's a, it's a Japanese design, and in order to make one, your material needs to have a one to three ratio. So this bag, which is the perfect size for a loaf of artisan bread, I cut my material 12 inches wide by 36 inches long. You can make bento bags for different things and you can change your measurements to make them different sizes. You just always have to have that one to three ratio. Um, I am using, I'm making it reversible, so I'm using two different materials. The other materials that are recommended for these bags are cotton and muslin. So I picked up a piece of cotton and a piece of muslin. I'm going to use one for one side and one for the other. I have cut and pinned my 12 by 36 inch piece. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this from way over there, but I have pinned them right sides together. And right now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew around the entire bag on a half inch seam allowance and not up by the corner, but on the long side of the bag, I'm going to leave about a two inch gap. I'm going to tack the, the uh, seam on both sides of that gap so it doesn't tear apart, but that gap is going to be for turning. And before I get started sewing that seam, I do want to point out to you, because I forgot to tell you, that it's very important that you uh, wash and press your material before you start this project, because otherwise, you know, cotton um, and linen and muslin are all known for shrinking. So you don't want to make your bag and have one material shrink and not the other. It'll be all misshapen. Um, and you definitely want to iron it as well so that when you cut it out, you're actually cutting, you know, 12 by 36 inch pieces. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew that seam and I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, so I have sewn um, around this whole thing with a half inch seam allowance. This is a really light thread. So I don't know how it's going to really show on here, but you may be able to see where I have left the gap and I've tacked at both sides of it. So this corner is where your two inch gap is. And I'm just gonna stick my thumb in here and I'm just going to start pulling the material up toward the other end because you want to go to the long, like you don't wanna start right there at the corner pulling your material through. You want to go to the other end um, it will start to bind up on you coming through the hole if you go too close. So I went down to the far corner. I'm sticking it up through with my fingers and then I'm just going to start pulling it all through. And uh, hopefully you could see what I mean um, by how quickly all of that came through. That would not have happened if we would have started down on this end that's closer to the hole. And then you can just start working the last of that material through. This side can be a little bit more difficult to do. 
but you'll get it. You just have to have a little patience. And then once you've turned your bag inside right, you're going to want to do something with your corners because you want them to be more defined. I recommend that you use something pointy but blunt, like maybe a crochet hook to kind of form the corners out. I am going to use my scissors today because that is what I have here. Um, I don't recommend that you use something sharp with your scissors. You're always running the risk of pushing through the corner. So I'm going to go back to this gap that we have left and I'm going to take my scissors and put them up in here and go to a corner and then I'm just going to gently kind of push the material out to get that defined corner. Now because we didn't trim some of the uh, seam you can actually like clip the corner off and then you're going to get an even more defined piece right here and I didn't do that and I'm fine with that because of the look of this bag so for me that corner right there is just fine I'm going to do the same thing with the other three corners and then I have all four corners poked out there and ready to sew so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch around all four sides as close as I can to the edge. And um, it's again, it's pretty simple to do. You're just going around all four sides. The one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you catch the um, edges of this material here at the gap because you want to close that gap off without leaving any holes and um, if you are just going as close as you can to the edge you will definitely catch that gap. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start not at a corner because you're going to have to tack at your beginning and your end and the tack is going to be on the corner if you do that and when you're finished with your bread bag one of the things that's going to be very noticeable is going to be the corners where you tie your bag you'll see when we're done later so I'm going to start just a little bit in so that I can tack and then go around all four sides and when I come back I can tack right there again to close everything off Okay, you guys, so here we are. I have sewed um, along the edge. Again, this, this thread is so light that I'm not sure if you can see it, but I got as close to the edge as I could. This next part is the part that I had a little bit of trouble with. Well, not the very next part, but we're coming very close to it. So you're going to take your... Um, your bag and you're going to lay it out on the counter and then you're going to take the corner and you're going to fold it down like this and you do want to take a couple pins and just pin that in place you're not going to sew this part but it's going to be a lot easier on you if it's not flouncing around later and then you're going to go to the other end and I'm going to slide this over and you're going to pin that corner as well, but you're going to pin it going in the opposite direction. So here you are and you have one corner folded this way and one corner folded this way. And the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to your corner up here and you're going to fold your bag down. So you can see that there's sort of a shape of a bag here. And this is where I started to have trouble. Everywhere that I've seen online, they pull these seams up together and they stitch them. And then when they flip over, they do the same on the other side. But I found that there's too much of a gap here, especially after you pull these up and you stitch them, that gap gets even bigger. Like if we pull that up and we have all that material there and we flip to the other side, we have quite a gap there. And then when we try to pull these together, 
this will come all the way up. I don't know what they're doing, they're not showing anything in the instructions, but I got very, very frustrated with it. So this is what I did. I pinned this side together first, but I brought it up a little bit and I pinned it like that. And that helped to close the gap on the other side. So you're just bringing that up and then you're just going to pin this together. And then I flipped this over, unpinned this, and brought it together on this side. And it is still higher, like it's a longer seam than the other side, which is fine because I believe that's how the bento bag is supposed to be. Now, if it's not, I am i can't really figure out exactly what I'm doing. I'm thrilled with my bag and you'll be thrilled with yours. I looked at so many tutorials and I looked at so many videos and um, it just seemed like both of their sides were even, yet all of their measurements were a three to one ratio. So this is what I did. And then on each side, you're going to sew your seam. So I'm gonna get rid of all of the extra pins in here. They're not necessary. And you want to tack really well on each end because your bag is going to open like this. And when it does, you know, when you're in daily use, you're gonna get some pressure here and you want this to be tacked really well. So I'm going to go over the machine and I'm going to sew these seams. I'm going to tack really well on both ends and I'm just going to bring my new seam just inside of this one. All right so again we don't have like perfect seams here. We really don't. I'm trying to get where I can show you that. Again, I don't know if you can see because it's so light, but we don't have perfect seams here. They're not lined up perfectly and that's okay. This is a very casual project and it is actually a complete project because you can use it this side, right? And then you can reverse it, which is the way that I like best. Just take and push your corner out and then turn and push your other corner out and there you go. You have a bento bread bag. Here's a bag that has a loaf of bread already in it. I'm just, I'm crazy about these bags. They are so wonderful, so simple. The really great thing about them is, you know, they're not gonna keep your bread fresh forever, nothing is. But when it's time to put that bread in the refrigerator or, you know, if you want to freeze it for a little bit later because you're not going to get to it, you're leaving the house for a couple days or whatever, this bag can go right in the fridge and it can go right in the freezer. Now, again, it's not going to last forever in a freezer, okay? It's a temporary solution, but it's just nice that for three, four days, you can toss it in the freezer and keep your bread until you're ready to eat it. I do recommend that you slice your bread first before you do that. Bento bags can be used for so many things. They are not just for bread. I did this post for a bread bag because I need one and because I know that many of you probably need one too, but they have a plethora of uses. And there's a lot of information about that over on the blog post. So you can go over there and take a look if you would like. I will make sure that I put the link for the post down below for you so that it's simple enough for you to get there. I hope that you're going to make yourself one or two or many of these bags, make them in all different sizes. I know that I'm going to make many of them. I really love this project. And as always, it is great to have you here with me today. I'm so glad that you're here. And we are going to get together again. We're going to do it really soon.